Hi all you music fans, my name is Andy Rodriguez, also known as the Black Spinner. And if you're new to our channel, what I do here is that I go through my vinyl in alphabetical and in chronological order. And today we are going to be doing the letter U and V. We're going to do both letters because I've only got a handful of them. But they are going to consist mainly of two bands, U2 and Van Halen, with a couple of surprises in between. Now, if you're new to our channel, what I do is I'm going to go through the albums that I have by um, by the bands and artists that start with the letter U and V. And each album, I will tell you a key track. Maybe it's a track that you've never heard of and you might want to go stream, or it might become your favorite song. So don't forget to um, leave a comment and also subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get to talking. Let's get started. You too. This is their debut album, Boy. And um, I forgot a little bit of history about the band. The band is out of Ireland, and they came out in 1980. That's when their debut album came out, called Boy. In 1980, the band members are Bono, The Edge, Adam Clayton, and Larry Mullen. And they haven't changed the, um, band, the, the band lineup. It's been the same from from 1980 till it is right now as we speak. So let's start talking about this album here. Boy, this is their debut album. Um, you know, we're this is their debut album, so we're so still we do not have Edge's distinct guitar sound. But nevertheless, his guitar work is still superb. A little bit um you know, a little bit not as produced but nevertheless, it's it's a fantastic guitar tone he's got on here. On the songs on here, I will follow um, Ant Cat Dubba, Out of Control, The Electric Company, also A Day a Day Without Me is a really good song, and Stories for Boys. Here's the back of it. This is off the island label. Is this just a paper? No, this is not just a paper. Copy um, insert. This has some lyrics there. I believe it's not all the lyrics. It's only the lyrics to side one for some reason. But yeah, um, this is a really good, interesting start for the band. You can tell that off their, just their debut album, they have a lot to offer. They are very um, aggressive on this album, and they're very sure of themselves. Second album they came out with, October. This is a album that was their second release, and the songs on here. Let's go through them. This is they're still on the island label here. Um, Gloria is the way they start off, and when I first heard it, I thought it was going to be the Gloria cover, you know, done by them and so many countless other artists. But it's not. Um, it's a anth it's a anthemic song for them. I mean, you can pound your fist at it. It's a really good song. Um, I will fall down. I throw a brick through a window. Rejoice. Now, a lot of these songs do have a theme. Um, they they follow a, relig a religious theme, which is not out of the realm for the for you too. If you followed you two for a long time, you know that they do have an overcurrent or an undercurrent of politics and of um, religious themes. And side two on here, um, October is a pretty good song, and that's and Stranger in a Strange Land sticks out to me. But you know, a lot of critics and a lot of um, YouTube fans kind of put October towards the bottom of the list for albums, which I can kind of understand. But um, during the past couple of years, it's gotten a lot of love. Maybe it's gotten a lot of love because the last two or three albums that U2 has released were a little iffy. Maybe that's why October has moved up quite a bit. And after that was their third release and this is the album that will break them into the mainland. This will break them into America. U2 War. This is a fantastic album. Right here on the edge is starting to really get his music um, going. I, I'm nice music. His guitar tone. His signature sound. 
on the songs on here. Of course, the hit song, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. Seconds is also a good song. New Year's Day, like a song, Drowning Man. That's right. Side One is a is just a perfect, perfect album. And this is what you can consider maybe college radio rock at the time or um, alternative rock. But really, it was just a good, solid rock band in the early 80s that didn't sound like anybody else out there. Um, side 2 has 40, which uh, will go on to higher, to greater heights when it's released in um, live form. And Surrender is also a good song. But yeah, this um, is a fantastic album by, by you 2 this is one of one of my favorites by them. I do tend to enjoy more on the um, I do tend to enjoy more on the um, later side, the um, uh, 90s, early 2000s is what I really enjoy by U2 as well. What I have here is a is a mini LP. This one's under Blood Red Sky paper insert and again you know island and the songs on here are just fantastic like I was mentioning before um, the songs that were on war um, but this will have Gloria I will follow 40 will come out also on this live album and a little bit well not a little bit a lot better than was on um, on war, on um, New Year's Day and Bloody and Sunday Bloody Sunday and the Electric Company on side two. Side two is just fantastic. You can feel it on on side two. In fact, this whole album, this live album, is just great by them. And did they call it a mini LP? But you know, it still has eight tracks on it. You know, which I guess is a mini LP. I mean, eight tracks. And they're live. It's a fantastic run through. After that, we come the Un Unforgettable Fire. This has a couple of songs that really stick out, and a couple that are just like, eh, I could have done done without. Um, but still, a sort of homecoming is really good. Pride in the name of love, which is, um, if you're familiar with that song, it, it is. It, it it resonates live, but also it is a um, a um, tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. The Unforgettable Fire, which is the um, title track, Fourth of July, and Bad is on here. Bad is a great song. That too will come out on other releases live, and it will expand, and it's fantastic. But even on on album it's a really good song it's called bad check it out and after that will be a um, I believe this I guess this could be called an EP <clears throat> there's a couple songs that are live and I mean a couple I mean two because on each side there's two songs so this only has um, four songs on here this one's called U2 Wide Awake in America there's Bono in the front. Here's the guys in the back. And um, it says right here, as a special low price collection of live recordings and outtakes from the Unforgettable Fire tour and album. So there's a couple of songs that did not make the Unforgettable Fire. Um, this has Bad, uh, Live, like I was saying, you know. It's going to be coming around live in a better form and a sort of homecoming and side two will be the songs that um, were did not make on the previous album, which will be three, three sunrises and love comes tumbling. There it is, wide awake in America. So, I, I mean, it's only four songs, but it's good to have inside um, your um, collection if you're a collector of U2. Now, next will be an album that will break them worldwide. This is the Joshua Tree. There's the back of it. The tone on this album, here's the inside of it, which I've always liked um, this picture of the guys. Um, the tone of the album is a little, um, the, the production of it is perfect, 
but it's also um, kind of low line, if that makes sense. It's not in your face. It's a little it takes a little back seat a little bit. You you as a listener are in the forefront, and the music that's coming out is kind of I don't know how to explain it. I know it sounds weird, but it is a good album. And it's one of their best. In fact, it's one of the best albums ever released. Um, let's go through the songs. Um, where the Streets Have No Name, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, With or Without You, Bullet the Blue Sky, Run to Stand Still, all that is on side one, which is a perfect side. The side two, Red Hill Mining Town, um, Trip Through Your Wires, and Exit, and One Tree Hill, and In God's Country. I don't know what I was trying to say about the sound of it it just it it's odd because it puts you in the middle of it if that makes any sense and next is going to be a double album double album also a mixture of live tracks put in between now um i would have liked it better if this was just released as an album of new tracks because the new tracks on here are very interesting and um a lot of these um tracks were also recorded in sun records in memphis tennessee and i'm talking about rattle and hum and there will also be a movie that will come out of this chronoline chronoline the um tour of the joshua tree um here's the inside of it there's um, the picture of the guys um, recording in the Sun Record Studio, which we, my wife and I have taken a tour of. And there's a couple of pictures back there of um, Elvis and of Sam Phillips, the, the founder of Sun Records. Let's go through the songs on here. This starts off with a Beatle cover, Helter Skelter. And um, right off the bat, you know, um, Bono being Bono was saying um, Charles Matson took this song for the Beatles and we're taking it back and they go straight into Helter Skelter um, a song that was made for this album recorded for this album Desire which is one of my favorite songs by them um, another um, cover here all along the watchtower and I still haven't found what you're looking for off of um, the, the Joshua Tree done in a live and with a gospel setting, I enjoy the um, the um, the original version better. Um, Silver and gold, pride in the name of love, done here in a live setting, which sounds good on here too. Um, the songs on here um, on side three, Angel of Harlem, which is a tribute to the to the great uh, Billy Holiday. Uh, Love Rescue Me is a song written by Bono and Bob Dylan. Uh, when Love Comes to Town has B.B. King and and you 2 which is a standout track for me. I really like like that song, When Love Comes to Town. You know what? I call that the, the standout track, but then All I Want Is You is a fantastic ballad. It is stripped back, and it just seems like when you're hearing it, you just it's, it just seems like you're in a dark room hearing the song and you know, alone in a dark room but the song is all i want is you which is fantastic love that song and um also has bullet the blue sky a live version but you know this is a hodgepodge it's it's kind of messy but you know it's a double it's a double album some of it is live some of it is um album tracks which means that it is a interesting listen, and it really is. And and this, you know, this is also a very important um, release by you two. I used to have a Rattle and Hum T-shirt back in the day. I've seen them one time when they came to Houston, and um, unfortunately, I got there late. I got to see them take stage, but I missed the Muse, and I haven't. Uh, Muse hasn't been back, and I really missed them because I'm a I like Muse a lot. M-U-S-E, if you're not familiar with them. Um, that's it for my YouTube on vinyl. I have their other stuff on CD and cassette. I'll go through them when I hit those medias. 
So let's move on. I, I said I was going to have a couple of surprises in between Van Halen and U2. And here's the first of the surprises. This album here it comes from a band out of England. Um, hard Rock. Um, maybe even a little bit of Gothic in their sound as well. Little Gothic, Doomy, Heavy Rock. Talking about Uriah Heep. And this first album that I have by them is um, Salisbury. And look at that album cover. I don't know what it is. It's like a demonic album cover. And the music on here is just as scary. It grips you. I mean, the, the organs and the guitars are just fantastic on here. There's the back of it. And the songs on here, really, um, beginning to end, this is a fantastic album. Um, High Priestess, The Park, the Time to Live, and Lady in Black was a standout track for them. Um, Simon the Bullet Freak is kind of weird. And this ends with a 16-minute title track of Salisbury, which takes up, you know, all of Side 2 pretty much. 16 minutes of it. Um, this is a great album. This is the first Uriah Heap I bought. I bought it cheap. Um, I say, you know what? I've heard of these guys, so I might as well, you know, give it a shot. And boy, I was not disappointed. And this led me to want to find more Uriah Heap. And here we are with um, Demons and Wizards by Uriah Heap. Um, this will have um, their first big radio hit, Easy Living, which, you know, if you've heard Easy Living, don't let that fool you. Um, it's, it sounds nothing like Salisbury. Um, but this album here, it fits in nicely. Um, the Wizard, um, Circle of Hands, and Paradise, The Spell, another, you know, 12 minute great track with great instrument with great instrumentation by the band. I don't know too much about the band members. That's why I didn't mention them. But then, but nevertheless, when you write he gets together, they jam, they rock, they do a very good job of it. And next I have by by you right heap is the birthdays musician the right yeah, the magician's birthday. I almost said backwards. The magician's birthday. <clears throat> Here's the inside of it. This too is a fantastic album. I really like this one. Spider Woman is a hell of a song. Blind Eye, Echoes in the Dark. Um, the three songs in the middle of side one just boom, just blow me away. And um, side two. Um, it ends again. They seem to have this um, this last track on side two is either ten minutes or longer, and um, this would be the magician's birthday again. The title track, just like Salisbury, takes it up, and it's just it's fantastic. It's great. So if you're not too familiar with with Uriah Heep and you like the heavy heavy rock of the early '70s, check it out. I highly recommend it. And next, like I said, we we're going to be talking about Van Halen. Now, uh, the band Van Halen hails out of Pasadena, California. And um, they start off with David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen, Alex Van Halen, the drummer and guitarist. And they are brothers and along with Michael Anthony, the bass player. And also, I say bass player, but also the backing vocals. That is not sold short by Van Halen. People don't mention enough about the backing vocals when it comes to Van Halen. And um, I love the David Lee Roth years. They are my favorite years is, is, is with David Lee Roth. And there's going to be a twist with that in just a moment. But let's get started. Van Halen with David Lee Roth, their debut album. This will probably be in my top 20. I don't know yet. This is the... I'm debating between this one and another Van Halen album being in my top 20. But this will be also on my top debuts of all time. Because I'm going to be doing an episode of that as well. Let's go through the songs on here. This is an iconic album. Let's go with um, You Really Got Me, which is a cover of the Kinks. 
I went through my kinks when I was going um, through my albums of the kinks. Um, Y'all know that I'm a kinks fan as well. You really got me. Um, Jamie's crying on fire, running with the devil. I'm the one, the one, the one. Like that song, Ain't Talking About Love. Feel Your Love Tonight, Atomic Punk, and Eruption. Almost a perfect album, except for a couple of tracks on there that I could do without. Ice Cream Man, I could do without. Again, you know, it just seems like David Lee Roth always has to stick in something. A little bit of a shtick song like we were talking about his solo albums when I was doing the R's. And let's get to their second album, Van Halen 2. Again, the um, iconic um, the iconic logo of the band. Here's the back of it. Is this open? This is not a gatefold. But I do have the um, inner sleeve there we go. The song's on here. You know, I was hearing this the other day, and I never really got... Well, I do like Van Halen 2, but not as much as Van Halen 1. With that being said, you know, it starts off with You're No Good, which at the time was also being done by Linda Ronstadt. And, and nothing against Linda Ronstadt. I love Linda Ronstadt. I think she's a beautiful woman. Great voice. But Van Halen doing that at the same time. I like the Linda Ronstadt um, version better. And then Dance the Night Away. It's an okay song. I like Dance the Night Away by Van Halen. Again, because of the backing vocals on it. And the chorus by them. But man, it, it seems like it doesn't fit on this album when you get into Somebody Get Me a Doctor. Just classic, dirty Van Halen. Bottoms up, same thing. Um, Out of Love Again, same thing. It just seems like the first two tracks on this album don't fit on here or don't belong on here. Um, Light Up the Sky is another good song. Woman in Love, and it ends with Beautiful Girls. Again, the backing vocals on Beautiful Girls is fantastic. So um, Van Halen 2, another blockbuster for the guys. And from there, we go to Women and Children First. This is another good album. Eddie Van Halen stretching out on the guitar, not, 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 not resting on his laurels that he did on the other albums. He's pushing it out. And that's what I like, like the most about Van Halen is Eddie. You know, he's the soul. He's the leader of this band, regardless of who the front man is. And the band goes the way Eddie goes. If Eddie doesn't want to go, the band ain't going to go. So the song's on here and the cradle will rock. Man, it sure does. Romeo's Delight. Um, the lo Loss of Control. Take Your Whiskey Home. And the, and the great track on this album to me is Everybody Wants Some. Um, I don't know if y'all remember that song, that movie with John Cusack um, called Better Off Dead. And um, he gets his job um, at the, um, I guess, at the burger place. And it's his first day. He's goofing around. And the hamburgers come to life. And and the, and the hamburgers are dancing to everybody wants some. How about you? Yeah, this is a really good album. There's the back of it. I don't know if I showed it with the guys. And after that, I know I'm going to be saying this might be my favorite Van Halen album. This is my favorite Van Halen album. But this is one of my favorite Van Halen albums, too. Fair Warning by Van Halen. I'm telling you what. Eddie goes off the rails on here. Don't know which way he's going. And even if you hear this this album several times, you still don't know. You, he goes off the rails. Goes here. Goes there. Um, the songs on here, Mean Street. I do like this one more than uh, Women and Children First, which a lot of a lot of fans and lists, you know, they're they're interchangeable. To me, this is the better album. Um, so this is Love. Push comes to shove. Unchained. It, this is just a great album. One foot out the door. And does this have? Yeah, this has a sleeve inside. And there's the logo again. 
Yeah, this is just great. I love it. Fair, fair, fair warning. If you're not too familiar with fair warning by um by Van Halen, go ahead and stream it. You won't be disappointed. It, it just rocks. And coming from such some from one of my favorite albums by by Van Halen, we get to an album I don't like at all. Diver Down. I've tried so many times. You know, I follow I follow some people on Twitter, and every time it's like the, the anniversary of this album, people talk about it, this and that. So I always give it a shot, and I still just can't get into this at all. Got a couple of time, a couple of songs, and they're going to be um, it's going to be the um, uh, the covers. You know, where have all the good times gone by the Kinks? An old pretty woman, which was a hit for them. Um, I guess if I had to hang them high, cathedral. If I had to, I would pick those songs. But still, it's nothing to go look up, in my opinion. And next, I have um, 1984, which was a album that put them through the stratosphere. It. Um, it made a worldwide a worldwide phenomena. I used to have this on cassette when I was in, I guess, elementary. It came out in 1984. I was 10. I got the cassette. They were all over MTV with, with um, Jump and Panama and and um, Hot for Teacher. And there's the back of it. And right here, of course, you know if you know if if you've been following Van Halen. This is where Eddie incorporates the keyboards. And this will be the last album with David Lee Roth. Songs on here. This this is also one of my favorite Van Halen albums as well. The songs on here. Um, 1984 is just an introduction of the instrumental of keyboards. I believe it's yeah yeah it's about a minute long, and and people put it on, and you're like wow this is Van Halen, yeah, and it was very well done. Um, Jump Panama, Top Jimmy, Top Jimmy, Drop Dead Legs. This is just a great album from 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 beginning to end. Hot for Teacher, the great pop of I'll Wait I'll Wait. To your love comes down. Girl Gone Bad and House of Pain. Man, you know what? This album from beginning to end, this might be the Van Halen album that I will talk about in my personal top top, top 20. Right there is the um, insert of it. A lot of 80s, like kind of a checkerboard kind of thing. But yeah, and just the album cover is iconic. You know, a baby angel smoking with a with a pack of cigarettes right there and one in his hand. So like I said, that would be the last album by David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth will leave. There's different stories of why he would leave. You know, one thing that I heard was that they had, that um, Eddie... Wanted to bring out a new a new album out, and he was recording in his new studio, state of the art studio called Fifty One Fifty, and David Lee Roth came up with a demo of California Girls, and he played it for Eddie, and Eddie's all, "Wow, you know, how'd you do this, or where'd you do this?" And um, well, he had recorded it with another band, and he was still in Van Halen. And Eddie's all like, yeah, you know, I don't want to do more covers. You know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do California Girls, you know. And then David Lee Roth tells them, kind of, you know, not word for word, but saying, well, you don't understand. I'm going to release this as a solo artist. And right there, Eddie, this is Eddie's band. And he, you know, I don't know if he was fired or David walked away or what. So, and walk Sammy. Sammy Hagar. We talked about Sammy Hagar's um, discography as a solo artist. I've got quite a bit. I am a Sammy Hagar fan. 
and I know I said that I love the I love the David Lee Roth years. Well, I love the Sammy Hagar years also. I love them both. I don't know why there has I don't know why people have to pick between Sammy and Dave. It's still Van Halen from beginning to end. It's Van Halen. And if anyone says, "Oh, well, you know, Sammy took over," this is Eddie Van Halen's band. No one is going to take over Van Halen but Eddie. If there was more keyboards in their sound, if their sound got a little bit softer, it's because Eddie wanted it that way. Okay? So Eddie Van Halen has his bloop, has his hands all over these. It's not Van Hagar. This is Van Halen. Because all this was done by Eddie. Eddie's approval. Eddie's saying we're going to do this. The music is going to be like this. Let's go. And their sound had to change for them to keep going. They could not sound like they did in the early 80s and push that sound into the early 80s and into the 90s. And into, well, no, let's just say into into the 90s. Because they would have been dead. And they would have stuck with the same David Lee Roth sound. They, they, they had to sound fresh. They had to sound new. And with that being said, I love the Sammy Hagar years. And in fact... Here we go, 5150. This might be my top 20. I might have to listen to 1984 and 5150 and choose because I don't want to have two albums by the same band. But then I was trying to tell myself, but they're not the same band. They have different singers, Andy. But still, there's the back of it. This is Sammy Hagar's debut with the band. Here's the inside of it and all of its glory. Um... Best of Both Worlds, what a great song. Um, Dreams, another great song. Just an anthemic song. Why Can't This Be Love? It's a great, great mid-tempo song. Love Walks In, same thing. The title track, 5150, Eddie Going Crazy on Guitar. Um, good Enough, Good Enough has that David Lee Roth kind of feel to it. But also what's better with Sammy is the songwriting. The songwriting sure does get a lot better because Sammy incorporates his writing into this. Um, Summer Nights and Get Up. I'm going to have to hear this to choose which one I like better. 5150 is just a great iconic album by them as well. You know, others, other people... Seem that they choose, you know, I choose Sammy over Dave. I choose both. I will enjoy both. I'm not going to ignore any any kind of history from Van Halen. And just to say, you know, I was born in 1974. This came out in 1986. So when this came out, I was 12. So I was in junior high and high school during the Sammy Hagar years. So, you know, I went back to hear David Lee Roth. Even though, even though I had 1984 when I was about 10. So that so Sammy Hagar was my junior high and high school years. So that's what was important to me. Very important to me. Here we go. OU812. This has a couple of hit songs that, that were big radio hits and big hits on MTV. But the bread and butter... And the meat and potatoes to this album are the key album tracks. The album tracks that Eddie just goes crazy on guitar. And his guitar tone is different on OU812 as it is on any other Van Halen album. There's the um, Van Halen. The, the logo is fantastic. Um, let's see here. This is going to be um, also, this is also produced by a different producer, not Ted Templeton, who had done all the David Lee Roth albums. Um, this will be with Don Lindell and AFU, Naturally Wired. That's just a crazy guitar song. Crazy. Black and Blue, great song too. Cabo Wabo. You know, it's a song by Sammy, you know. He's got that Cabo Wabo tequila. You know, he's got Cabo Wabo um, bars. And still, you know, he sings about Cabo Wabo. Um, the song is fantastic. 
and then Feel So Good, which was a radio hit for them. Finish What You Started, which was a radio hit for them. Uh, Mine All Mine is a great, great song. It's a little, you might even want to call it a little bit on the, dare I say, getting to a little bit of a prog sound. Not quite, but on the outskirts of it. Um, Source of Infection is just okay. Sucker in a Three-Piece is really good. And When It's Love, another radio hit. Man, you know, and eight, um, OU812 is kind of skipped over. And I don't know why, because it's great. OU812, another album I would regard just like um, Fair, Fair Warning. It's not highly talked about, but it's so good. So good. As you all can't tell, I'm a big Van Halen fan. I really am. And um, I've got four unlawful kind of knowledge on CD, so I'll talk about that when I get to my CDs. But I did find balance on, on vinyl. A lot of people don't like this one. I love this one. I absolutely love balance. Um, another. This will be the last album with Sammy Hagar. Um, the songs on here, The Seventh Seal. Just a rocker, man. Um, the Seventh Seal, Can't Stop Loving You, which is kind of a ballad. Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do. Amsterdam, Big Fat Money. Doing Time, which I believe... Um, I know there is a... Um, there is a um, instrumental on here. I don't know which one it was. I forgot... But let's see on here. And this one will also have a different producer. This will have Bruce Bruce Fairbairn. Um, Strung Out will be the um, instrumental on here. Um, Take Me Back, Deja Vu. Man, this is just a good album. But Side One really has it all. All that you would need from this album. By Van Halen. And next, that's all that I have for Van Halen right now on vinyl. And next, I will have a debut. I think this is their debut album. Vanilla Fudge. This is the only Vanilla Fudge I have. If you're not too familiar with them, they are a guitar and um, keyboard heavy band from the late 60s. I believe this was 67. Yeah, 67. This is almost full of covers. And um, kind of sounds like early, early, like the first two or three albums by Deep Purple. Um, this will um, have Carmen Apice on drums. Of course, Carmen Apice will go on to play with so many hard rock and heavy metal bands. Songs on here that stick out to me. It's kind of a mixed bag for me. Um, they stretch out the songs, which is fine with me. But they stretch them out a little bit too long where you kind of lose interest. Um, you know, the covers on here, Ticket to Ride, People Get Ready, She's Not There, the big song by the Zombies, um, You Keep Me Hanging On, which was a big hit for the Supremes. And this is that, that was a big hit for them too. They do a really good job of it. But they also do an eight minute of Eleanor Rigby <laughs> by the Beatles. And as you can guess it, that really goes on for quite some time where you go, wow, is that still on? And the last that I have for the letter V's, last but not least, he is the pride of Texas, the Texas blues man who lost his life, I believe, in early 90s, 91, 92, in a helicopter crash. We are talking about Stevie Ray Vaughan. This will be his debut album, Texas Flood. And this is, um, there's the back of it with his band, Double Trouble. Um, this has Double Trouble on there, doesn't it? Yes, it is with Double Trouble. Um, Love Struck Baby, uh, which is a great song. Uh, Pride and Joy, Texas Flood, Tell Me and Testify, all that. Side one is just fantastic. Um, Mary Had a Little Lamb, which is really fun to listen to. And also, they do a um, song here, which is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A tribute to um, Lenny, Lenny Bruce, which is a um, comedian um, from the 60s. Very groundbreaking comedian. 
And um, it looks like Mary Had a Little Lamb was a, um, a song also by Buddy Guy. But nevertheless, a great album. But this is the only thing I have on vinyl by him. Other stuff I've got on cassette and I believe on CD also. And I'll talk about that when I get to my cassettes and CDs. Hey, hey, well, you know what? Thanks a lot for um, joining me on this fantastic episode of the letters U and V, which was dominated by U2 and Van Halen. But also, we got to talk a little bit about, Re about Uriah Heep, a great um, English band, a great hard rock, almost trending towards um, gothic, goth sound, if you will. Which is, you know, um, not that many people talk about Uriah Heep, so I'm glad that we talked about Uriah Heep there for a little bit. Well, I hope that you really enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoy going through my albums and sharing them with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment and give me the thumbs up. And also, um, thanks a lot for joining me. Take care of yourselves and keep rocking, and I'll see you guys next time.